Hello, wrestling fans of the world. It's me, it's me, it's the ROB, the real Bobby Munson, and I'm coming at you here on August the 2nd. It is a Wednesday, it is beautiful outside, and it is time to talk some wrestling. So, let me get things started off. I'm just going to start off with a little bit of a plug here, because this Friday night, uh, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, the Bridge City Brawl is going down. Yes, the stars of HIW's Wildside brand are going to be back to the Bridge City, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for another amazing card of action. Uh, if you have not seen an HIW show and you are going to be in the Saskatoon area or can get down to the Saskatoon area, I suggest making yourself available for this in Event because you are going to be treated to a, an amazing night of wrestling action. Let me tell you, HIW put on some of the absolute best wrestling that you are going to see anywhere, folks. Uh, so yes, I'd always check them out over at HIWCanada.com for ticket information. You can also contact me for ticket information. Uh, tickets can be picked up at a couple different locations. Uh, Round Saskatoon, including the one where you will find yours truly. Yes, Vapor Jedi. Happy to carry tickets here for HIW Wrestling, and in particular the Bridge City Brawl this Friday night, August the 4th, 2017. I believe doors open at 7:30 p.m. or so, or 7 p.m. My apologies, and or something like that <laughs> so uh, $17 in advance for a ticket to get in if you are looking to upgrade that ticket $22 gets you a VIP gold and let me tell you about the VIP gold package folks you will get into the show a little bit earlier than the uh, standard audience does uh, so you're gonna get a chance to get in there pick your seating so you can get right front row for all the action uh, exactly in the spot you want to be in and on top of that you're not gonna go home empty-handed because you're also gonna get a chance to get inside that ring with one of the stars of HIW's Wildside brand get your picture taken uh, so a little little keepsake to take on home with you uh, let me let me just put it this way guys HIW go over and above all the time for all of their fans uh, I don't see these guys ever saying that you know enough is enough the they, they want to put on the absolute best show not only that they're making time for the fans uh, the fans seem to love them uh, if you go online check out their Facebook lots of pictures of lots of great people who have had a chance to be in the ring with these great guys and guys and gals of HIW wrestling and it is amazing they you know these people they are basically doing this for the love of the industry they dedicate all their hard or you know their hard work and everything it's all there it's all because they love this industry folks they don't do this because there's any big payoff at the end of the day for them they're not working for big contracts or anything like that you know they are doing this because they love wrestling just like i do just like all of you do we love wrestling and these guys and gals put in endless amounts of hours that even I can't even begin to understand like I mean it's it's mind-blowing how many hours that the folks over at HIW put in and dedicate of their own time to be able to present these shows to us uh, we should be only so humble to have them right in our own backyard here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. So again, if you have not had a chance to go out and check out an HIW show before, or if you have had a chance to check out an HIW show before, I suggest that you take this Friday as an opportunity. It's a long weekend Friday, so hey, if you're going to be in town, why not? go Friday night bring the family the kids are welcome everybody's welcome come on down it is the Sutherland Hall in Saskatoon $17 gets you a ticket in advance I believe it's 20 at the door 22 for those VIP gold tickets so come on down contact me if you're looking for tickets I've got tickets here so yes now let's get down to business uh, outside of my uh, love for the local talents and everything we are going to flip ship over to WWE this week and we went over to WWE Raw a uh, few things to know I'm not going to break down everything that happened so let's just uh, get right down into this uh, this starts things off with Kurt Angle coming out giving a uh, impassioned little speech and stuff like that and then Brock Lesnar comes out with Paul Heyman and they are complaining 
about P Brock Lesnar being put into this fatal four-way. Heyman even making claims that Kurt Angle only put him in there because he wants to assure that Brock Lesnar doesn't walk out of SummerSlam as the Universal Champion. Now, the stipulation added to this is Paul Heyman says that if Brock Lesnar does not win and walk out as champion at SummerSlam, he will be leaving the WWE. Now, is this a sign of things to come? I don't know. Hard to say here, folks. There's a lot of rumors afloat about Brock Lesnar and his opportunities going back into the world of MMA. So whether or not this means that we are going to see a Lesnar loss, I don't know. Or whether the WWE is just once again doing a very, very good job of absolutely trolling us. Uh, they have done this many times before. And they are going to probably do it many times again. Uh, so it, you know... Heads up, it could be us being trolled, and Brock Lesnar could easily just walk away with that title still at the end of the day. But when it comes down to it, I mean, this is a big match with big guys. It could go absolutely any way at this point. I don't even want to start making my early predictions just yet because I'm not sure. I At this point, I'm not sure. It could be any one of those four men walking out as Universal Champion at this point, and nobody would be surprised. So we had, uh, you know, some uh, tag team action. Uh, we had the Hardys versus Anderson and Gallows. You know, the match was pretty decent. Uh, nothing big or memorable. I think what was more memorable was that after the match was done, the Revival being on commentary there were then ended up in a brawl with the Hardy Boys on top of the ramp. Anderson and Gallows also getting themselves involved in this uh little fight at the top of the ramp and then the sweetest part of all was the poetry and motion that the Hardys hit off the ramp when uh, Jeff jumped off Matt's back and onto his opponents on the outside that was fantastic nice little spot there uh, no so uh, switching gears from what we actually saw that night though it was interesting to note that uh, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy have basically more or less teased the idea that the broken characters are coming to the WWE, whether it's in the fashion of them being broken or this new Woken universe that they seem to be teasing as well, too. They seem to be saying they have been awoken, or awoken, sorry, and that uh, there's now a bunch of Woken wisdom coming out. So, you know, we'll yet to see whether or not this means that it'll be the same, whether it'll be the broken characters, whether this is a new element to it, what's going to happen, but in some way, shape, or form, it does sound like the Hardys have got the opportunity to start changing into this new persona, which will be definitely good to see. Uh, we had um, six-man tag action up next in the cruiserweight division. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into it, but I got to say, you know, the cruiserweights looked like they were actually able to do more cruiserweight like action in this match uh, very fast paced uh, very interesting to note there could WWE be on the horizon of you know letting these guys go a little bit further you know take it a, a, to that level that they're used to yet to see uh, we had the Miz TV se segment there with Jason Jordan as a special guest um, wow what a pile of dog crap that one was um you know again miz does everything he can to make this good every single time he does everything in his power and man did he have to dig deep on this one because jason jordan is just not there i mean it's great that they want to do this angle with him they you know for black better terms angle um they want to do this whole thing with him right now they want to push him but i don't know if he was the right choice i mean the guy's got a good look he is a good ring worker but man his voice for starters is it it just does not fit that guy's body there is no aggression to his voice at all like you just you, you feel like he's a child still and like when i mean child like it sounds like an overgrown 12 year old when he gets on a microphone it's like when you hear mike tyson talk for the first time and you're like that that guy beats people up uh, just 
doesn't seem to jive anyway. So, uh, you know, Jordan got on the mic. He ends up making an attack, doing a belly-to-belly to the Miz, hitting him into the Miz Taraj and takes off. Makes Jordan look good. Makes the Miz kind of look like a chump again, as they tend to like to do with him. I mean, you know, having him and the Miz Taraj lose in a two-on-three match last week and then having Jordan best all three of them by himself really not the greatest looks for the Miz unfortunately because you know what Miz and the Miz Taraj are great and they should be great they should be dominant they shouldn't be taking shit like this from other people like I mean my god I just to be honest I just don't understand the obsession with wanting to push Jason Jordan right now I don't think he was ready for it you know on the flip side we will get on to Smackdown stuff soon and I'll tell you about why Chad Gable would have been the better choice for this particular segment. But all that aside, moving on, um, had a whole lot of stuff on Raw between Rollins and Ambrose. The whole idea, can they work together, can they not? Uh, teasing, coming from uh, Sheamus and Cesaro about how they're bu- buddies who used to hate each other, so they can totally trust each other, as where Ambrose and Rollins can't do the same, so I think we're teasing a SummerSlam matchup for the tag titles. Ambrose and Rollins versus Sheamus and Cesaro, so interesting to see where that could end up. Uh, So, yes, uh, Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor. That whole thing is uh, starting to kick off. Um, Bray Wyatt coming out, talking about how, you know, he laid waste to the man, Finn Balor. And, you know, know, again, a really strong Bray Wyatt-style promo. It's what we've come to expect and then the lights go out and the whole red flash comes on with Balor's little heartbeat to the start of his music and you're like oh the demon's coming out oh Bray's awoken the demon and then the lights come back on and just regular Finn standing inside the ring there and gives Bray a little bit of an ass kicking and done I don't know I know they're teasing the the <laughs> coming forth of the demon again i think we are so close to SummerSlam at this point that you needed to bust it out you needed to have them make a definitive decision yes bray wyatt will take on finn balor at SummerSlam. that needed to be decided on raw and raw really lacked in building the SummerSlam matches you got to build the matches then build the hype don't build the hype and then book a match at the last minute it just i don't agree with that type of way of going kind of thing because you know we want to be excited about this stuff i remember watching wrestling as a kid and every single week you'd watch what matches are they going to announce what matches are they going to announce that was the big thing they had a separate segment where mean gene okerland used to stand there and tell you you know he'd tell you who were the announced uh, announced members of the uh, Royal Rumble each year. He would tell you this match just announced for WrestleMania. This match just announced for SummerSlam. And you know, you were excited to watch that because you wanted to see what it was. And then, then you'd get back to your TV time where these guys would do the builds for these matches, make you believe that these matches should happen. So, for some odd reason, instead of being in the main event, we get halfway through the show for Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe. Fantastic match, by the way. Uh, I mean, this was a superb, top-quality match. These three big bastards showing us exactly why they deserve to be in the title picture to begin with. Uh, The only downside is why the hell this was ever on this early in the night. I mean, how could you put on such a big, big man match with this much caliber talent and then say, okay, so, you know, you've got me and the rest of the WWE Universe going, okay, well, well, interesting. That's not the end of the night? Wow, they must have something really big up their sleeve. And then, no, we don't have something big up our sleeve. You know, I like Elias. Don't get me wrong, Elias is great, but taking on Kalisto, was there a point? I mean, you know, okay, again, it could have been earlier in the night. Fine, that would have made sense. But honestly, aside from that, there was no real reason for him to be taking on Kalisto after a match like that. Uh, Nia Jax versus Bailey, I did, oh, you know, I've heard the report now. Bailey is officially injured from this match. If you watch the match, uh, separated shoulder. She gets tossed onto it. Uh, yeah, it looked painful. It looked really painful. Uh, not a great match. It was an okay match. But wow, this really kills. The only this, this is the second match that was scheduled for SummerSlam was Bailey versus Alexa. 
I think on the Raw side, if I'm not mistaken. Those are the only two, that and the main event were the only two they had announced. And now it looks like this main event is now, or the, sorry, this women's match is in jeopardy. So, again, now they're going to have to scramble with only a couple of weeks to go to figure out what their plan is. Now, had they been building, 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 the injury happened, and, you know, at the last minute, they could have sent somebody out for the save or done something to make it more legit. I know they didn't know right away what the extent of the injury was going to be, and that's understandable, but, you know, God, it just feels like they're always scrambling last minute all the time to come up with their decisions, and I just, I think that this really hurt is going to hurt them. This really is going to hurt them having Bailey out like this uh, after they made a big deal over her getting to this point. Oh, um, so up for the main event of the evening and what was probably the most dead crowd ever. You know, I had seen people already saying about how, how what did we do to deserve this main event? What what did we do? You know, the match itself. Okay, this was a match. It was Big Cass and the Big Show. And again, the match itself wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It wasn't good, don't get me wrong. By no means, it was not a great match, but it wasn't a bad match. But here is the problem. You put Big Cass and Big Show in the wrong place. You know, if you would have role reversed these ma- this match with the triple threat match between Strowman, Joe, and Reigns, it would have been a whole different ball game. The whole night would have been a whole different ball game because Raw probably would have been fairly decent. I would, say, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say it would have been excellent, but it would have been quite decent had they just reversed these two damn matches in the positions they were at. At this point, the crowd had seen the best of the best, and now they were being given big casts in the main event, and nothing to. T- not taken away from Big Cass. So, you know, he's been around for quite a while. He's getting this push. Okay, you know, run with a big guy. But he's not quite there in terms of singles runs yet. He's not there at the moment. <laughs> you know, and going one-on-one with Big Show, I mean, that that's great. But this is something we needed to reserve for earlier in the night or reserve for the pre-show of SummerSlam or, you know, something along those lines where... The crowd is not going to just go completely silent. When the crowd goes silent on TV, God, is it noticeable. I really sat there scratching my head thinking, man, like, you're getting two big bruisers like this. And back in the day, people would have been excited to see two big men lock up like that, even if they were not good in the ring. But now, oh my, how times have changed. And again, the, you know, there was nothing about the match that was overly exciting other than, you know, at the end when it looked like Big Cass actually legit taking a punch from the big show because i mean talk about good uh good acting on Cass's part when he had his eyes rolling in the back of his head like he did so but yeah i mean nothing nothing much to note there i mean it's you know going to be very painful and a hard comeback for big Cass as a character to have people get any sort of reaction out of the guy unless you do something better with him i mean you know having him you know, turn on Enzo, okay, yeah, you're going to get an immediate reaction and stuff like that, but if you're going to have a crowd go stale because you put him into the wrong position on the card, you're never going to get the man over, and you're only going to hurt his career, and I feel sorry for the guy if that does happen, so, you know, hopefully uh, Cass recovers because that uh, he definitely does not need that kind of thing. So then uh, over from there, we find ourselves on SmackDown Live from last night. So uh, I don't know if anybody watched this, but should, could we call this uh, WWE SmackDown Presents We Are Sorry About uh, We're Sorry About B- Battleground? That's a, that's a good title. We're Sorry About Battleground. It's an apology for Battleground because they gave us a night of wrestling. And what a night of wrestling. If we start off the night, uh, another title defense, uh, AJ Styles taking on Kevin Owens for the United States Championship. Uh, AJ Styles having won this in a triple threat last week uh, where he pinned Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens not involved in the fall. Now this match would end in controversy again as AJ Styles uh, rolled up Kevin Owens with a referee that had been just recently clocked out accidentally by Owens. Uh, the referee did not have a good position. Uh, Kevin Owens' arm was clearly up the entire time, never down for a pin at all, and a three count was counted. AJ Styles retains the title. Uh, backstage, 
Uh, right away, Shane McMahon and uh, Daniel Bryan confront the referee, uh, Mike, I believe his name is, and they tell him that he had made a bad decision and that uh, this was going to get ugly, that they had big problems on their hands. That's when Kevin Owens comes out and he, w- with passion, God damn it, Kevin Owens, with such passion, makes you believe that he had just been screwed over big time for real. Like, you would believe this guy had no legitimate knowledge that this was going to happen to him the way he reacted backstage it was fantastic uh so i loved when he shane turns around he goes you know what you have a reason to be upset and i'm gonna make this right i will give you your rematch at SummerSlam against aj styles and kevin owens reply was oh you're gonna make it right that's that's great yeah yeah of course you're gonna give me a match at SummerSlam." You know, like, oh, you know, it's almost pointing out Captain Obvious, and I loved it. Uh, Kevin Owens doing really, really well there. Uh, then he, Kevin Owens complaining that he wants a referee that can stand on his own two feet and is not going to get knocked over, and you know, is going to make the right call. So Daniel Bryan says, "Well, Shane's your answer then." So we are getting at SummerSlam. AJ Styles, Kevin Owens for the United States Championship. Shane McMahon is the special guest referee. Uh, up next, we had Sami Zayn versus Aiden English. It's not much to talk about. I mean, the match was pretty decent. Um, man, a lot of people are going to be upset. Sami Zayn took a loss here, a surprising loss here. And I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, they're just holding Sami back. You know, Sami this, Sami that. You know, there's a lot of Sami Zayn fans out there, and they're really upset when he loses so much all the time and you know what i think the thing you don't understand here folks is that the reason they're doing this is because this is how you build an underdog if Sami Zayn is a guy that keeps coming up short you know he's taking losses to guys who he shouldn't he's losing to mike Kanellis, he's losing to aided in english and stuff and then you're kind of like you know, as long as they don't drag it out too far to the point where you just get tired of waiting for that big moment, that big payoff, fi- that's fine. You know, and what, I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to build this whole feel sorry for Sammy feeling, which is good. That's a good thing because then when finally he gets in there and he tangles with somebody that, you know, you're not expecting him to win because he's been buried, 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 as we like to say. And then all of a sudden he nails it and comes up with that big win that you're not expecting. God, is that crowd going to pop? You imagine AJ Styles gets that title shot or whatever. He gets that, you know, and I'm not talking necessarily WWE title shot. I'm talking like, say, okay, he gets put into a match for the United States Championship. And you're like, okay, it's going to be a good match. But again, Sammy's just there to take a loss to make the champ look good. And next thing you know, boom, Haluva kick, boom, Sammy Zayn, one, two, three, and we have a new champion. And you're like, holy shit, Sammy Zayn just won the freaking title in WWE. It's going to happen, folks. Just give it time. I mean, these things do take time. Everyone needs to understand that wrestling is an investment of your time. If you're not willing to wait, then I'm sorry, you're not going to get the payoffs that you expect. Uh, next, we had uh, Naomi and Becky Lynch versus Natalia and Carmella. T- uh, mixed head, or sorry, mixed, <laughs> sorry, tag team action from the women's division. Uh, it's an okay match. Not anything big to note there just mostly uh building up the hype for SummerSlam where we will see Naomi taking on Natalia and still no real uh clear idea of what the other women are going to do but not that that's the worst thing in the world yet folks because again I was just recently complaining about how they keep putting them all into these you know five-way eliminations and ladder matches and this and the other like okay just sell it down let's get a clear-cut story perfect Natalia won the opportunity. She's going to go on to SummerSlam. Her versus Naomi. You know, there's the tease with Carmella and that money in the bank contract. Perfect. That's what we need. We need some clear cut stories coming from that side of things. Next up, Chad Gable versus Rusev. And if there's anybody out here who's listening who hasn't seen this match, turn off this damn podcast right now. Head on over to the network or whatever whatever any way you can go watch this match this match was surprising like i know that both these guys are great competitors i i know that but did i not know that they would allow them to go toe-to-toe like they did 
Yes, Chad Gable took a loss here, but man, did he take Rusev to the limits. And again, you know, this is like the way they made Gable take AJ to the limits. Now he's taking Rusev to the limits. You know, this is a great look for Chad Gable. It's kind of like that. It's that upstart guy. You know, he's got that ring rust because he's not quite as experienced as the guys who are beating him right now. Um, you know, and yeah, again, yeah, he had taken out Kevin Owens and took him to his limits too. You know, again, they're building Chad Gable as this guy who's, you know, he's that one step off of being the the best. You know, he's one step off of being the top guy. And man, his move set, his skills, his ability in the ring, he moves around that ring like a young Kurt Angle. And this is why I'm disappointed they picked Jason Jordan. They picked Jason Jordan solely based on the idea that people used to make these jokes that he looked like a young Kurt Angle and stuff like that. I think that's the only reason for picking him and that he's the bigger of the two guys. And we know that, as always, Vince McMahon loves big, sweaty men. Uh, so, what's to say? I think Chad Gable, honestly, as long as they keep doing the right things with him, is going to have a better overall opportunity. He's fantastic in the ring. He can talk better than than uh, Jason Jordan can, for sure. Uh, his music is not the worst thing. Yeah, that's another thing. Jason Jordan's new song over on Raw. Oh, shoot me. That has got to be one of the worst things I've ever heard in my life. So, uh, Rusev picking up the win, as as I mentioned, but, you know, not making Gable look like a chump. Gable really took it to Rusev, and Rusev really selling that fact. Rusev afterwards cutting a promo saying that everyone who ever steps in the ring with him gets beat by him, that he does not have any clear competition going into SummerSlam and that it's not right. This is when Randy Orton comes out, Randy saying that if you want competition at SummerSlam, look no further. Uh, Randy then hits Rusev with an RKO and a match has been set for SummerSlam that we weren't expecting. Randy Orton versus Rusev. Hey, I'm down. Sounds like a good, interesting match to me. SummerSlam starting to become quite stacked at this point. Now to end the night, the dream match. Shinsuke Nakamura versus John Cena. The winner will take on Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam. So what to say about this match other than, damn it, what a great match. <laughs> um... You know, has there, has there been a, I, I don't know, like, this match was just superb. I can't say it enough. Like, this was a fairly damn good night of wrestling of any night. Like, this beat my expectations by far, like, this whole night. Like, these matches were better than the whole of Battleground. <laughs> That's the thing. And this was a two-hour SmackDown show. Battleground lasted three hours and 15 minutes or whatever the hell it lasted this was a two-hour episode of smackdown and my god this really was a night of great in-ring action and these two shinsuke nakamura john cena just took the brutality to each other i believe that in my mind john cena got the best out of Shinsuke. He got a better version of Shinsuke than we got when he was, you know, taking on Dolph or taking on Corbin so far. So, you know, these higher caliber matches for Shinsuke are definitely a big payoff for him as a character in the ring. Uh, John Cena, obviously an expert in that ring, knows how to he knows how to take somebody along for the ride, definitely. Uh, this match, very back and forth. Both men getting a lot of their stuff in. Surprisingly, Nakamura kicking out of an AA. John Cena tries to go for a second one and uh, is unsuccessful. Or, Well, no, sorry, he hits a second one and then rolls Shinsuke up to do a third one. Shinsuke manages to battle out of that. Um, Shinsuke then gets the... Uh, Jesus, I'm trying to think of the name of the move. I apologize. It's a form of a suplex. Then Cena looked like it landed on his damn head. Man, he took a sick bump there. It was fantastic. Kinshasa finishes off the night. What a match. Damn it, this match. Definitely in contendership for, you know, at the end of the year when we do top 10 WWE matches of the year. I am definitely going to be looking back on this one as a potential contender for that honor uh it definitely deserves to be up there so once again cena breaking into that contendership for top matches um i don't care what you think of the guy i mean the guy is a workhorse through and through fantastic individual and you talk about the guy burying young talent and stuff like that he not only put Shinsuke Nakamura over in this match. Afterwards, he shook his hand and raised it and showed the crowd 
that he also believes in Shinsuke Nakamura as a top guy in WWE. So yes, there you have it. John Cena taking a loss, setting himself up for something else for SummerSlam. In the meanwhile, we are going to get Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam. Holy shit, where is that one going to go? <laughs> it's hard to say, folks. I don't know, but I am definitely intrigued. I mean, you know, Jinder has been an interesting champion. I am not against it like some people are. I, so I believe don't hinder Jinder, but at the same time, I'm not against a Shinsuke Nakamura title run either. Uh, where do you go? Is it too early for Shinsuke? Is it too early to stop the run of the modern-day Maharaja? Let me know. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to Rob's Rock and Wrestling here on YouTube. Uh, if you're on Twitter, please make sure to get this and tweet this out to the world. Share it with the world. Hey, if you're on Facebook, why not share it on Facebook? Share it in Facebook groups. Share it all over the place. I want this shared. And remember, folks, again, this Friday, if you're in the Saskatoon, Saskatchewan area, come on and check on out Sutherland Hall, 8 p.m. bell time. It is going to be the HIW Wildside Stars as they lock up in that squared circle. You will see such great stars as Michael Richard Blaze, Al Asasino, uh, amongst many others. Uh, you know, again, we're going to have poss probably have great stars there too, like uh, Michael Allen Richard Clark. You're going to have guys like Mike McSugar. Uh, again, I don't know about the status of his situation right now. Uh, I hopefully will know more before Friday, but yes, I am also looking forward to the return of Chris Summers who's, uh, you know, been taking a little bit of a summer holiday, so to speak, right now. Uh, but yes, uh, definitely going to be uh, big when Chris Summer steps back between the ropes again there, too, as everybody already knows. And Or if you don't, a uh, good personal fan, fan of the man, the future of professional wrestling, Chris Summers himself, uh, trying to do my best to get him as a guest on the show sometime, as uh, he's a good personal friend of mine, and I know that he's uh, busy there. He's busy down in Florida talking up all the ladies there, uh, picking up a little bit of the... Uh, Lady Luck, is, so to speak, there in the Sunshine State. So I'm hoping that uh, he would take time out of his busy schedule to fly back to Saskatoon prior to Friday. Uh, or shortly after Friday, if he's back in Saskatoon to be part of the action. Uh, hoping that I can get him here on the show. So that's going to be it for me today, folks. Hope you have a great and wonderful rest of the week. And for now, Top Guy out. <laughs>